Hi, this is Haitian Jonas. You're watching live in Haiti at Kaiser Hotel. Um, next to me, everybody know who, I, who he is, Mr. Luke Melville. What's up, my and brother? I'm wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. And I know you had a beautiful night last, I think it was Saturday. Two days ago, yeah, Saturday yes. night. Friday night, sorry. Friday night, yeah. yeah. You were performing, and uh, many, many, I don't know, strangers. Many people here. Came all the way from any, uh, all over the place. But my name is Asian Jonas, and we're also live on Reggie D Production. Yeah, Reggie. We got both watching and both networks, so we want to say thank you for watching. And we'd like to talk to Mr. Luke Melville. Um, no, sorry, man. This is Haitian Unity in Effect. You know what's written that, on that flag there? That's what they're doing. That's what we should all be doing, by the way. Work together. That's it. You, you, um, how you say that? Nino de la Force. That's it. It's just um, that word. They actually do it. Yes. Luke Melville, Boston is listening. Everywhere in the States is listening. Facebook is watching us. YouTube is watching us. Reggie D. Respect D. Yeah, is man. Is watching us. So, a lot of people don't know what's going on. Can you let the people know who you are? They already know. Who am I? That, that's a very large question right, right there. Well, I was born right here in Haiti. I'm happy to be right here back home. I left this country. I was four years old. Uh, my parents took me to Canada, lived there, lived in, uh, in the States a couple of years too. Same thing in France, same thing in London, and uh, I'm a singer. I wear many hats. I'm a writer, uh, and when I say I'm a writer, not just uh, songs, lyrics for songs, I'm talking books. Uh, I wrote a book uh, called... Um, I'm trying to translate in my, my head, which means uh, my race is the best, and talking about the human race. Uh, I did eight years going around the world trying to understand the work of the international corporation, what they're doing in the world, what are these NGOs doing in the world, to understand after eight years that, that these people have created a business called poverty, and there's money being made with this, because I haven't discovered, I haven't seen not one country, not a single country out there that can come out and say, our situation has totally changed because of the NGOs or because of international cooperation. I'm not saying that all of them are bad. I'm not saying that all of them are doing bad things out there or wrong things. But the reality is that none of them, all of them together, have not been able to change the situation of even a single country in 30 years. So I looked for eight years to understand why and looking for solutions. By doing this, I wrote a book which I committed to that situation to, to tell people about the world situation, geo, geopolitical situation, and to also find solutions on how we can help uh, countries like Haiti, because I did find solutions, and most of them were coming from the private sector, from investors, and that's what I'm trying to apply here uh, in Haiti with a project called Village Village, which I'm sure people heard of. That's where we're gonna come. Um, for them to get your book, where can they get it? Like Amazon. Or? Amazon, you could get it on Amazon. You can get it uh, on the internet. What's the name of the book again? Maras et la meilleure. Maras et la meilleure. Oh, you're good. You're good. <laughs> your French is good. And I'm learning French by horse. <laughs> <laughs> so there were a lot of controversy. Mm -hmm. um, media, international, they didn't want to come out because they didn't have enough truth about you. And they do their work. They do their work. And they do it well. They yes. know you cannot just come out there with saying things if you don't, do not have anything to, to, back, to back it up. Yeah. And also, I've worked for international medias such as uh, CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, which is the biggest and the most respected media in Canada. Mm -hmm. So they know me. And I've been into this business for 25 years uh, in media and singing and uh, I've always been outspoken and say what I think politically, economically about what's happening in the world. So basically, they know if anyone comes out there and said something about me, they'd have to really go and check it out before going outside you know, or printing something and saying things. So, which is why they just they didn't go out there and print things before. Uh, a lot of trash papers in Canada did though, and trash papers that's what they do. That's where they make their money and their bread and butter. Uh, what was really sad to me, though, is that our Haitian journalist abroad, because I was in Canada when that occurred, that situation occurred, took 
those trash papers and release them on the med medias without asking who are the people writing this and without checking uh, these medias and knowing who they were and what exactly they were writing and finding out if uh, they had a background, they had bag backbones to their sayings. So that really saddened me and I, I had to come back to Haiti. I did a press conference talking to these people and, and telling them, well, I know that uh, we don't have maybe the infrastructure, maybe uh, the know-how or the money or the, the technology to go and check everything out. But we have to be careful when, when anyone out there is saying something wrong about one of our own. I mean, for ages, people have been saying, it's Haitians are fighting Haitians. Haitians are saying wrong uh, against Haitians. It's always nice for some people out there. I'm not saying everyone, but for some people, it's always nice for them to see us fighting, to see us uh, killing one, one another. And we know we're seeing it in the States. We're seeing it around the world. We have to avoid this. When something like that occurs, you have to sit with your, with your brother and ask him, if me, to come out and just do a press conference. I would have. I had to call out a press conference. They did not ask me when they had my number. They could have called me it's and like, asked. It's like they enjoy what they were doing. That's it. And it's sad. It's sad to see this because we're talking about something about $50,000 disappearing. Yeah. It wasn't me. It was someone in my organization that did something. But it's like you have a company. Someone in your company does something that's not really cool for your company. But if you're a known person, it's you people are going to talk about. So basically, I never did anything, but it's me they were talking about. If I ask any of the, those journalists that wrote this about a year ago, who that person was, none of them can tell, tell me the name. That's right. You remember you spoke about this? Yes. I'll take you as an example. I'm yeah. sorry to do this, yes. but I just want to prove my point. Yeah. Okay? Because you did speak about this too. What was the name of the person that did that thing in my, in my uh, foundation? They said it was a co your cousin. First, it wasn't my cousin. Yeah, that's what First, they, that's what that's they, what they wrote. That the but he wasn't my cousin. Yeah, I talk about it. But secondly, what was his name? I don't remember. You don't remember. No. Most journalists, I'm just trying to show you something. Yeah. Not that he's not prof professional and not, he's not doing his job. It's just that today the work of journalists have changed. Yeah. Most of them are not there to, to give you the news. They're selling you the news. They're selling you... Uh, time they're selling you paper they're selling you ratings and they're making money off of that yeah. so whether they're telling a lie or not whether the news uh, is actually verified or not it, they don't even they don't really care they're selling news they're making money off of that sure. that's what most of them do and if I go out there and ask any of them who was that guy they don't know all they remember is me because I'm the known figure where I did not do anything and my name is all over the place. I have gathered in, let's say, the last past 20 years, millions and millions of dollars, and no one out there could come out and say, Lark Merville stole one penny. There's a history of 50,000, and they come at me, and it wasn't even me. So it's really, it's weird, you know? And we spent far more money into, we invested far more money into helping our country. I'm talking over $500. So, who in his right mind would spend 500000 to steal 50000 It makes no sense. But people don't think. You know, they don't think because these things are not, people don't tell you these things. So you have to really go deep before you, you go, put someone yeah. down. And that's the Especially reason. when he's one of yeah. your own. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why that I take the opportunity to ask you a question mm -hmm. regarding this. So... When that person they said that um, he stole money, mm -hmm. what happened to him? You see, first, I'm not naming his name yeah. because I, I believe it's not worth it, yeah. and I believe that uh, you I don't want to do the bad work a lot of people yeah. have done, uh, and I took the whole responsibility because it was my it's my organization. Someone in my organization did something, so I had to deal with it. But I had to deal with it accordingly. Exactly. That's it, with the law. And if someone does something before I accuse, I have to find real ground, real proof before I do anything. And actually, 
at the end of the story, we, we realized that he had made a mistake. The mistake he made was instead of putting the money into the account of the foundation, he had put that money in, in his own account, in his personal account. And at a certain point, he came out and he said, Luck, I have a problem. What's your problem? My problem is I don't know if I'm spending the money of the foundation on my own right now. Eventually, what I said, hey, this is 2011, 2010. This is Canada. We have technology. We'll go to your bank. We'll check your bank account, and we'll take every number, and we'll check every penny that went out of there, and we'll we'll find out where the money went. It actually not only went into Village Village, the project, but he was actually using his own money. So he, not only he used the fifty thousand for Village Village, but he had also used some of his own money. So basically. Although he had made a mistake by putting this money on his account, he didn't do anything wrong. Actually, he spent his own money on Village Village. So it's the contrary. But when you have things like that, you go back to the medias and you say this, yeah. and you have proof. So you did the right thing. I did the right thing. I didn't accuse someone without knowing. Now, medias, you give them this. When they write the wrong, they write it like this, that big. When they write excuses, they write it like that, okay, in like the 30th page. So that's how it works, which is why you never heard that story. I'm